Model year 2021 is in full swing, Kelly. It certainly is, and there are some really cool new products to show you in the boating world. So uh, we're certainly going to do that today. So you got to stay tuned to this episode. Uh, yes, but we're going right. to start off first and foremost with our headlines, uh, including an all new Taiga boat unveiling for the return of the legendary Z3 or Z3 for those in, <laughs> in the Canada world again. Uh, four ways to fish a wreck. That's pretty cool because we've been talking all things fishing on Boating Tips Live lately. And yep. top products searched on BoatTest.com. So you definitely have to check that out. All our, our buddies over at BoatTest.com. And uh, our special guest today, Bob Burke from Galleon Yachts. He's going to be talking our all new Galleon model. You got that shirt. You're rocking it today. So I am. I am. Way to go. And uh, of course, we're going to have Landon on to, to show some cool uh, hot things. So, <laughs> yeah, stay tuned. Welcome to From the Helm Boating Broadcast with Marine Max, bringing you the latest news and notes in the world of boats. Thank you so much for joining us. Welcome to From the Helm Boating Broadcast. We are your hosts. I am Lisa, and that guy over there, he's Kelly. Say what's up to the folks. Hello, hello. <laughs> Please interact with us in the comment section, and if you like what you see, share it with your friends and family and your coworkers. You know what? Anybody who loves boating and wants to learn a little bit more, we'd love to have them join us. For our audio only listeners, thank you so much for joining us. If you'd like to see what you're hearing, you can find us on Facebook and YouTube. And as always, on the Marine Max website underneath the Lifestyles blog section. All right, Kelly, let's kick off headlines and get into the news and notes in the world of boats. Let's do First it. First up, Tyga. Uh, Tyga Boats unveils the return of the legendary Z3. Yes. Yeah, and uh, here we are on Tyga.com, Tyga.com slash boat slash Z3. And, uh, you know, they really been up in the innovation game these days uh, over at Tyga and just some of these really cool water sports, wake boats. Um, but it, the legend returns, they state. The all-new Z3 returns to represent Tyga's 30 years of innovation and honors its history of being the best-selling Tyga of all time. So apparently the Z3 is the best-selling Tyga of all time, and why not bring back that best-selling boat of all time? And check that there out. You go. That's just a beauty, huh? Yeah, Charlie Pigeon, owner and CEO of, T of Tyga Boats, stated, The original Z3 was a staple for Tyga for many years, with thousands of owners worldwide. So bringing it back on the cusp of our 30th anniversary is a unique and nostalgic accomplishment. Our team was passionate about carrying on the, legend the legacy and tradition of the original Z3 with today's technology and styling. We're confident that our past, current, and future Z3 owners are going to love it as much as we do. Yeah, and it's a, a beautiful boat and kind of vintage. I love those colors. Yeah, Tiger does a great job. Um, I love the wake sport boats because they do bring in a lot of interesting colors, yep. a lot of interesting seating patterns, and of course, you know, interesting technologies because you're you're usually doing some toe toe sports and you need a ballast to help, you know, get that sure. wake just right. And it's a it's a nice blend of the old and the new. You know, they're saying you know this is uh, their top selling boat. It's been around for a long time, so they're kind of just blending, fusing that 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 vintage with the all new. And of course, you know, with a wake boat, you can get a little more experimental with the color schemes too. So that's always cool to see. Very cool to see. All right, good job, Tyga. We look forward to seeing that in our Marine Max stores and uh, some boat walkthrough uh, videos on YouTube. Next up, we're going to take a right turn and talk about four ways to fish a wreck. This article is from Sport Fishing Magazine. And uh, Kelly, I thought of you when I saw this, so I had to drop this into our, oh, our yeah. headline section. <laughs> yeah, this is pretty cool. Um, and of course, you know, you got a Raymarine screen there. Everybody, we were just talking about it recently with Boating Tips Live, too, of how 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 advanced these things are these days. So, um, you know, anytime you have an opportunity, what do we, ooh, come on, load, I want to see that sweet. Okay, so. <laughs> Um, you know, smaller fish like sea bass can be caught using a typical, typical dropper loop rig. Uh, that's certainly true. Um, so this is a really cool article, just kind of going through talking about ways to fish wrecks. Um, and you know, around the, 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 definitely the West coast of Florida, there's a bunch of cool spots. You can uh, catch some really, really big fish right off, uh, some of these wrecks. So be sure to check this, uh, this, uh, article out kind of going through all the ins and outs of, of fishing wrecks, sport fish sportfishingmag.com and then uh look at that grouper that wow. is pretty crazy yeah no the, uh, the article i so i'm not really uh up on my terminology for uh deep sea fishing mm -hmm. i've only been a couple of times uh but some of the terms they use include bottom bouncing dance a jig on a troll or casting call 
Well, so, and I keep going back to the, the boating tips live, but they were talking about there's a jig master who just knows. And, and you see a lot of the pictures that are jigs that just basically go straight down and pull them back up and just kind of keep bouncing them until some of these, these grouper and some of these other uh, species just nail those lures. So man, it'd be fun <laughs> to be a, aboard a 380 outrage and uh, hooking up with some of these fish. Yes. <laughs> so what's, what would be your preferred method for, for fishing, deep sea fishing, Kelly? So, well, deep sea, that's, that's a tough question because it's so broad, but, um, you know, I, I'm not a huge fan of trolling. I mean, just because I, I, I tend to get bored, you know, my dad's always into the, let's catch a grander marlin. I'm always inshore. I love just getting inshore, you know, catching some, some, uh, you know, some redfish or snook or something like that. But if I had to go offshore, I mean, you know, kind of as you're trolling along, you get to uh, the captain's kind of just scanning the horizon too. And every once in a while, you'll see those bills or some fins on the top of the water mm -hmm. and then you gun it over there and chuck a live bait at it and hope that, uh, you know, that live bait, somebody just, uh, something just grabs it. So you never it's know. Tasty, tasty live bait. Exactly. No, I'm going to have to agree with you there. Um, I definitely, in the active, active fishing, you're casting and reeling, you know, active fishing. Yeah. And see, you see that bait right there. That's a good way. You see, uh, you just chuck one right towards, uh, whatever, whatever you see out there and <laughs> hope for a bite. Excellent. You know, another thing I really enjoy on my boats is a sea keeper. And according to boattest.com, the sea keeper one is one of the top products searched on their website. Uh, and the Seakeeper, as we all know, it helps with a role in stabilizing uh, for smaller boats. So yeah, I would, up I would this article. Um, I would say that that it certainly plays a huge role. And now uh, with the Seakeeper one is mentioned, um, I mean, just such a cool piece of technology. And mm -hmm. I was talking last week with us. I feel like I had so many conversations, but um, you know, they were talking about, well, it'd be cool if you had a Seakeeper on that boat. And I'm like, these things get down to, you know, 20, this is a 27 footer. I think the lowest they go, I could be wrong. We'll talk to the Seakeeper crew, but like 24. So, um, you can 23, 20, there you go, Lisa, you know, <laughs> Hey, you know what? I read this article. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So Steve Larravee, our buddy over at boattest.com going through the ins and outs of the uh, Seakeeper one, which always cool to catch up with that Seakeeper crew. Cause it's just such a cool piece of tech. It is such a cool piece of tech. Uh, so if you're unfamiliar with the Seakeeper product, I don't know if, you're, if you've been following boating in a while, you've, you've got to know about gyroscopic stabilization. Uh, but the Seakeeper one is can be installed on boats as small as 23 feet. It runs on 12 volts, so no, no generator is needed. And a lot of manufacturers are now starting to uh, engineer boats to uh, with space for this. Yep. Or the Seakeeper one. So yep. it's kind of cool. Yeah, because it was kind of a retrofit type thing at, for a while. But now a lot of them are saying, hey, you know, this is something that we want to either have standard or have that option ready to go where you can just pluck, plunk it right down in there and be off to the races. So cool to see uh, and, and cool to see Steve kind of going through how it works. So be sure to check that out. Boattest.com slash Seakeeper hyphen one. Yes, and we will link to everything in today's boating broadcast on the Marine Max Lifestyle blog for the episode. So if you need any more information, it'll be all right there for you. Um, yeah. All right, so we're wrapping up headlines here, and now let's switch gears yes. and get into our guest interview. All right, everyone, welcome to the program, Mr. Bob Burke, Galleon Brand Manager. Hey, Bob, how are you doing today? I'm hey, great, Lisa. Hey, Kelly, thanks for having me. Oh, anytime, anytime, sir. Yes, thank you so much for being here. And I think we have something very cool to kick this off with. Kelly, do we have a brand new debut video going out? We certainly do. Let's check it out.
All I can say is, wow, Bob. I mean, this new GTO is something to behold and, and something completely new for Galleon, which is really cool to see. Yeah, it's it's a fantastic, fantastic boat. It's been three years in the making. Wow. And, um, you know, the culmination, as you just showed there on the video, was, you know, the, the, the photo shoot that we did and the video shoot and to get, get out there and actually – you know, take something that's been on paper for, for years and then, you know, it goes through the process of uh, computer modeling and molding and then to actually have a finished product that you're able to to go run. And, and then, you know, that's the glamour end of this business, right? You see a, a right. video like that and you're just like, wow, I, you know, and but so much went into it, you know, three years in the making. We've got hundreds of years of experience that's gone into that with, mm -hmm. uh, you know, Marine Max and the, the market research is the largest boating and yacht retailer in the world. We've got uh, a tremendous team there that, uh, you know, we interviewed our customers. We, we, we found out what the market was looking for and we gave Galleon uh, basically a list of, of pillars that they needed to, to hit with this boat that the market was demanding. Mm -hmm. and we unleashed the artistic license of, uh, Yasa Kabilko and Tony Castro, world-renowned, um, award-winning designers, and and Yasek's the owner of Galleon. He's a very passionate and innovative guy that just drives uh, the industry forward. So, um, you, you give them uh, a bit of a roadmap and and let them run with it, and and you see the result. And it's uh, I can tell you from personal experience, the boat is phenomenal. So, and I think, you know, Galleon, at least in the Americas up until this point, has been focused on it. I can see it behind you, you know, larger boats, you know, yachts, yep. uh, the 510, the 68. Um, so when you're, you're thinking of a boat that's in the 30 foot area, what, how does that come about? Right. So again, it's, uh, it's a couple of things, market research and, and the fact that there's, there was a, a hole in the market we saw mm -hmm. and, um, the outboard power is extremely popular and also to to get people into our brand that's the, at a much smaller level right it's uh, right takes all of the innovation that we do all the award-winning designs that we have and all of that passion and energy and and make it available to a, a wider audience of boating enthusiasts so now you have um, a place that that a customer can come in at, at 32 feet and grow as we grow this collection and it's not just uh, a 32 foot uh, single unit. It's uh, it's a collection that we are uh, working on. So it's going to go from here to we've got something in the upper 30s. We've got something oh, okay. in the low 40s and mid 40s that we're planning. So it's uh, it's going to be an evolution of of this GTO Grand Touring Outboard, as we're calling it, collection um, over the next couple of years. It's 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 exciting stuff. That is very exciting stuff. So for people who may not be as familiar with the Galleon brand, what makes the GTO collection different from what's already out there? Right. So it's um, it's got a few really unique features. Uh, some boats have the full windshield, which we do. Um, some have it as options. We, we're doing it for pretty much one way, um, which we think is the right way right out of the gate. So you've got a full, <laughs> full windshield right across the, the front. It has a, a door that, that folds down. It's got some uh, a very sleek line to it. It has the DNA of, of Galleon. Right. Um, and there's a couple of unique features. There's a sliding uh, hatch to, to create headroom as you walk to the bow, which is, uh, which is really cool and, and needed, right? It's uh, mm -hmm. to not compromise the design. We had to come up with an innovative solution to make sure that you're not knocking your head as you walk to the bow. There's right. some steps on the boat, so you can walk from... Uh, stern to bow, bow to stern without worrying about tripping on anything. There's a, a slight rise in the deck uh, as a ramp to the bow. And then in the bow, it's full bow seating like you would have yeah. on, on a proper bow rider. So it's really nice in that uh, children and pets are all safe in the boat. You don't have to worry about going up to the bow and you're at you know knee high level or, or lower, which some boats have. Right. Yep. So um, they've they've created a really unique uh, design that has you know the 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 
aesthetic appeal it has the functionality it's just they've hit it on all cylinders and it's uh it's really exciting to to, to see yeah it has it all and uh one thing the the first thing i noticed when stepping aboard for the first time was just the amount of space i mean you know the beam to beam you just got a ton of space to move around to get around uh you talked about the bow seating i mean just relaxation mode for a lot of people and then of course in the back you got beach mode too Right. So with the seating, you have the storage. Um, and yeah, of course, we, we talk about the, the beach mode last, right? It's the what's kind of defined galleon in the in the industry and won all the awards with our 500 or 510, 640 and so forth. So this uh, this boat has a, a wing that folds on the port side and uh, you know, easy access to the water, which mm -hmm. is which is great. And it's uh, it's got a, a class leading uh, lower accommodation as well. When you look at the finish, the fit, the materials, the the head itself is unbelievable. Almost six foot, uh, or it is six foot standing room in the head. Wow. And uh, it just, they've hit it on all cylinders. It's a perfect day boat. It's a perfect weekender boat. Um, and it's all in 32 feet. So it yeah. really gets you excited about what's coming in 30 seven ish feet and something like oh, that. Oh, geez, right, right there. <laughs> so it's uh yeah, it's it's an exciting thing to to see. And uh, you know, there's just cool the helm is phenomenal. There's some some cool features there with an adjustable steering wheel, not only a tilt wheel, but the entire wheel goes up and down on a pneumatic cylinder that uh or an electric cylinder that allows you to stand, sit um, adjust it accordingly. Right. Your seats go back and forth, forward, forward and back, and they go up and down as well. So you can find comfort in driving this boat, no matter what the sea condition is, no matter what your, your range is. If you're cruising for you know uh, 150 miles, it's not a problem. You'll be you'll be able to find a comfortable spot, for standing, sitting, or leaning, and. Uh, the helm is just really, really well laid out. That's a good point you mentioned. I mean, a lot of times helm seats, you basically, you get what you, you get what you got. You know, right. you can't move the seat. You're basically, you're either standing or sitting. But in this, you're saying that, you know, the customization, the steering wheel that moves, the seats that move around. I mean, you have a lot of options to get comfortable in there for a day on the water. Yeah, for sure. And it, and it's all shapes and sizes too, right? It's uh, yeah. there's plenty of space. So it doesn't matter your dimensions. It's, um, you know, you can find a, a comfortable position, like I said, standing, sitting or leaning. So, uh, you know, put your arm on the on the console, have yourself a, a drink and uh, head on down to Key West. It's, it's there you go. Uh, it's, it's That's easy. the light. Well, let's talk a little bit more about the class leading manufacturing coming out of Galleon. I know we've talked before about vertical integration and just really what they do at the Galleon factory. Bob, can you talk a little bit more about that? For, again, for people who might not be aware of Galleon and, and kind of the benefits of that vertical integration and manufacturing. Yeah, for sure. So vertical integration means that you basically are building everything for the end product in house and um, Galleon is one of the most vertically integrated boat builders that I've seen and been involved with uh, from upholstery to the stainless steel, mm -hmm. to the paintwork to the uh, fiberglass lamination to the engineering and then a lot of the components of the innovative components they're designing and engineering all that stuff. They're one of the only companies that I think in the world that make their own hinges. Wow. Um, you know, I keep these things on my desk just because I love to look at them. This is a, a bow rail insert that allows the, the rail to fold on one of the bigger boats so that you can wow. board, board from the side. But it's just a it's almost like a piece of art, this small piece. And then this, I keep this on my desk as well to shows you the tolerance. They can cut stainless steel with their laser cutters. Um, you know, it's just amazing some of the, the stuff that they do at the factory and uh, from woodwork as well. I mean, they're they're taking teak and milling it down, uh, solid, you know, raw sawn teak. Um, they're laminating their own uh, cabinetry, uh, veneers, mm -hmm. plywoods, um, and so inlay work and all of that stuff. They're, they're doing it all in house, even down to uh, things. And we'll get you a, a picture of it so you can put it up as uh, the air conditioning grills that they're making out of wood, which, you know, <sighs> It's incredible. Most, you know, you watch somebody sitting there hand making an air conditioning grill, and you're just like, wow, it's you know, be so much easier to buy it. 
but yeah. it doesn't blend in seamlessly with the woodwork when you buy it, right? So it's yep. it looks like you slapped it on, and and well, that's what we that's what we don't do. So <laughs> yeah, really something to be said for vertical integration and just producing all of those things in house as opposed to well, we got this vendor over here that does the yeah. AC grills. We got this guy who does the metal. You know, all of that just knowing and, and being able to walk around the shop and 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 checking all the quality standards. I'm sure it really helps out the brand and, and makes sure that everything's top notch. Yeah, well, it's that, and it's also the the control on. You know, if you need something, you're not at the mercy of a, of a vendor. You're uh, you're able to produce it. And, right. and get the boat down the line, or get the you know the you know find an innovative solution to something that that you didn't expect um, with a, when you were designing a boat, for example. So on the 325, there's a, a really good example of this where um, that little hatch I was talking about that retracts. There's a, a gutter there and a drain. Well, it's very difficult to find a drain run in the middle of the windshield. While there's also a support rail and pole. And the the drain is actually the handrail, so the the drain wow. runs through the handrail and down into the deck. And uh, I mean, it's it's again one of those innovative solutions. So we like to say that we are a vertically integrated company, but we're also vertically innovative because we're not governed by the uh, you know the products that are on the market. We're pretty much governed by our imagination and what what is it that we can do? What is it you know, how can we find a solution? And, and we're not going to let mm -hmm. you know, this, this uh, company say, no, well, you're going to have to, you know, buy 30 of them and, you know, tooling charges and all this sort of stuff. It's like, right. no, we're just going to figure out how to do it ourselves. And we're going to do it, you know, in a lot of cases better. So, yeah, sure. you know, it's exciting to, to see that level of uh, dedication and, and confidence in, in our ability to create those kind of solutions. No, excellent. And do you see customers, uh, you know, people that aspire to be galleon owners, if they go in and want to order something specifically, making different requests and challenging the design team uh, just for like personal, you know, hey, I'd really like this feature here because I X, Y, Z, you know, insert preference. Right. So the interesting thing about galleon is for, the and you know, they've been around since 1982 right been building world-class boats and yachts for nearly 40 years and we were primarily a custom uh, and semi-custom boatyard for a very long time so uh, we did a lot of those types of yeah. uh, requests now that we're produced to the demand for the product worldwide has increased a lot mm -hmm. um, we we have the ability to do that stuff but it's it's uh, on a much smaller scale now because it, it's hard to produce the numbers that that we right. need to produce to to keep the growth going and to satisfy the market demand if you're building custom boats. So, you know, we we had had the ability in the last year to do over 150 boats, 50 foot plus. So, it's um, you know from five years ago where it was probably closer to 50 or 60 boats, right? So. Um, now we're adding the the GTO line, and and this is really an exciting new product that's going to have, um, as as we've done in America, it's um, you know a couple of small small options. We're fully loading the boats, so there's there's not a whole lot left on the table to, to right pick them, right. So it's um, you know you guys give, got it covered. Yeah, give provide a turnkey product. You could start you know at, at a very low. Uh, base spec and then you know okay well the boat doesn't have air conditioning it doesn't have a generator it has small power it has uh you know none of the features that everybody wants so just build them that way and put them in right. the market. people have a boat they're turnkey they're all you know very much similar in spec so you're confident buying even if one's you know available in the pre-owned market you know okay it's a u.s spec boat it has all of this stuff in it right already. it's not like it's an off spec boat hey bob and i know from being in the the boating biz a little while now that the american market is a little bit different than the rest of the world you know in terms of they want their air conditioning they want these certain amenities that a lot of the other the rest of the world you know they either pass on or whatever so um you know how has that kind of changed especially galleon being in the u.s market for and uh really kind of focusing on that for 
for a few years. How, how has that changed the game with uh, what, what Galleon themselves are kind of approaching a boat for the U.S. market? Yeah, so they know now uh, through the experience and th that we've had together, really, when they're when we're designing the boat or when the, the engineers are, are working on things, they're like, okay, we need, you know, big shore power. We need mm -hmm. big air conditioning. We need to provide space for all this uh, stuff in the in the furniture designs and, and everything. So it's, uh, you know, it's evolved and it's been uh, a, an integration that's, you know, as each new model comes, um, more and more, it, is is being designed in and and so then it's it's seamless in its uh in its construction lisa i know one thing that americans love too cup holders everywhere <laughs> they yeah. want cup holders no matter where you're going in a boat they want a cup holder right there just in case well we did that in spades on the 325 that's uh for sure there's cup holders everywhere and there was one place that had three cup holders that I thought one might do. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> we do three, we'll do three. It's fine. You know, people, people will be happy about that. <laughs> That's well, you have your water. I've got a, your coffee uh, and then your, your maybe alcoholic beverage for later in the afternoon. Perhaps. I need all the cup holders. Or both, so, you know, you got, you got a water and, and yeah, the alcoholic beverage. Gotta hydrate and dehydrate at the same time. <laughs> right. So is the, the GTO line, is the 325 just launching in the U.S. or is this a global uh, global model? I know it's, uh, I think they have some sales in in Europe. Um, okay. But more of a, a product that was focused and dedicated to the U.S. I know there's a, um, right. you know, there's some interest in Europe, but generally it's um, it's a product that, that is going to sell extremely well in the U.S. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. After spending the the day on it with the photo shoot, I can tell you that the boat is is unbelievable in functionality. We had six people on board. We were distancing. Um, you've got ten foot eleven inches of beam, and yeah. so you're able to to distance this way. And you've got thirty two feet in a cabin, and so we were able to distance um, quite well uh, for the for the uh, the shoot that we did. But we're also on the boat for nine hours, and we we took it to a dock and went to launch, and you really got the experience of what the boat's all yeah. about. Yeah, and um, I think we we really ended up with um, one of the most comfortable, entertaining platforms. The beauty of it is that you have the ability on this boat. Um, many boats in this size range have <clears throat> uh, like a, a long transom seat that wraps around. Well, we've got entrances on both sides. And what it does is allows really good flow through the boat from bow to stern. So as you're spending the day on the boat, or we did, as we did with six people on board, you never ran into anybody and everybody's right. easily able to move around. And I think that's, uh, that's really important when you get into, you know, it's not a huge boat at 32 feet, but it feels like a huge boat. It really does. And then it performs uh, every bit like a galleon with its DNA. It's got uh, the weight to it. It's solid. There's no rattles and creaks or squeaks when you're running. We were in, we had a chase boat that was 26 feet. We're 32 feet. We were up on top and running at uh, 38 knots, something like that, 37 knots. And in, in three to four foot short chop, 25 knot winds, West Florida, you know, conditions after two days yeah. of wind. And the chase boat that we had was taking water over the bow, we oh. charging. So it was uh, as amazing to see when the boat gets up on top and starts running. It's uh, it's really a, a comfortable cruising boat in just about any condition. And you certainly uh, see it in the video. You know, it wasn't a perfect day. You always, for a photo shoot, want that perfect day with maybe yeah. a few clouds and that sunshine. But you know, sometimes nature throws a curveball at you. But at the same time. That also allows to show the capability of this new boat too, right? I mean, it allows you to get on some some larger uh, some larger water and uh, see what it's got. Yeah, for sure. And I'm excited to uh, I'm excited to spend more time on her, do some weekends, and and really get the feel for it. But uh, it's funny when you're doing a photo shoot. Um, we had to go into the cabin, and of course, we were we were masked and all that stuff. But we had four people at one time in the cabin because you're shooting the models on board. And yeah. We were comfortable with four people in the cabin and it was cold. We turned the heat on. It was, it was nice. 
That was yeah. nice. Yeah. yeah it was it's nice. It's like, wow, this thing has it all. We're, you know, we're comfortable and the conditions aren't great, but you know, we're comfortable. That's yeah. excellent. We, we did well, talk briefly real quick uh, about, um, you know, one of the main features, obviously we talked, we briefly touched on it, but the outboard power too is something that the American market is just, you know, it's, it's something that's been around forever, but for Galleon, it's a newer thing. And, uh, how does, how does outboard kind of change the game for Galleon and, and particularly this, uh, this new GTO line? Well, I think, uh, you know, as I mentioned before, it makes it makes the brand available to a much wider audience of, of boaters and enthusiasts. So, you know, now we can easily, you know, our yachts, we, we have some amazing customers that want what they want and, uh, and we're, we're thankful and blessed to have them. We've got uh, right now a 55 galleon heading to uh, an inland lake and it's, wow. uh, it's quite a process to move that boat, right? This, this boat is uh, 10 foot 11 inches wide. It can be put on a trailer and go just about anywhere, right? So we can, we can uh, expose Galleon to all of the lake markets throughout the country. Um, and, and it just becomes one of those, those things that, that makes accessibility a lot more easy for a lot more people. And I think that's, that's the excitement and enthusiasm around the project and around the outboards and you know it's a competitive space for sure oh yeah i think we have a uh, i think we have a unique solution you know we're not a center console we're a it's more of a uh, a bow rider dual console weekender kind of hybrid sport mm -hmm. so it's uh, and i mean it's it has these seats in the back that flip two directions so and some rod holders that you know, of course, you could put as many as you want on it, but uh, you can. In fact, we had a customer that sold the boat, um, and he's a fisherman, and his wife wants more of the the family day boat, and he said, "Well, this this will do both." Yeah. Fish off of this, there's plenty of room back here. You've got rod holders. Put a few totally. more rod holders here, and and we can fish off of this. No yep. problem for the type of fishing that they do. It's it's uh, you know not necessarily a hardcore fishing boat, but it's a it's a boat that'll do just about anything you need it to do. Excellent. Well, it's definitely a gorgeous vessel. I know that viewers are probably wondering where they can see it in person. Uh, do we have a, a plan for a launch at a boat show or what's, what's, where can people see the boat? Right. So we have this, uh, this first boat, which is the prototype. Uh, production is beginning uh, as we speak, really. Mm -hmm. So this will be shipping. Uh, Probably we'll see some cadence of product coming in uh, April, May, June, and then you know fairly consistency there, uh, consistent thereafter. But this boat, we're actually planning a tour of Florida, so it's going to hit, I believe, eight or nine Marine Max locations plus the Palm Beach Boat Show. So Excellent. there'll be um, we're going to have a schedule put out for that, and we'll be inviting you, our audience, and, and boating enthusiasts to come to our stores and and see the boat at a Marine Max location near you. So uh, we're in the process of putting that program together and we'll, we'll have that out on social media and we'll have it out mm -hmm. on uh, our other platforms. Excellent. And, and for all the viewers out there, if you're interested in learning more, galleonyachts.us uh, is the website and you can find them on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube as well. And of course the Marine Max website um, and is specifically in the transcript of today's broadcast, we'll link to everything so you can find more information about the Galleon 325 GTO and where it'll be and where you can see it in person. Uh, definitely very exciting news coming out of Galleon. Yeah, we, we can't wait to, to really get the reaction from everybody. I mean, those of us who had the opportunity so far to, to spend some time on it and run the boat are just blown away with it. So, uh, you know, of course we're a little biased, but <laughs> like, to, like to hear what uh, what the market has to say. I, I'm, I'm confident that, that they're going to respond favorably and it's going to be a monumental success. Excellent. Sure. All right, Kelly. Do you have any, any other questions for Bob while we still have him? You know, uh, it is just a, a beautiful boat and extremely capable. And uh, it, it definitely it fits right in with the rest of the Galleon brand. And if you know that brand well, um, you know, fit and finish is a huge part of what they do. And it certainly fits that niche, too. So, um, yeah, kudos to everything that Galleon's been doing uh, throughout the years of our relationship with Marine Max and Galleon, but especially with this new outboard model and uh, hopefully series. 
Yeah, for sure. It's, uh, it's exciting times ahead. And that's not to take anything away from the yachts. I mean, we've got, right. we literally just unloaded the first 410 HTC, Ooh. which is the coupe version of the 400 fly, which has already been extremely successful. Um, first one here, it's actually the first one in the world. It was unloaded yesterday on a ship. So um, we'll, we'll get some information out about that okay. as well while we're talking about the GTO. We've got other new and exciting projects uh, happening as we speak. So more to come. Yeah, more to come. It's only right. the beginning. It's only the beginning. We keep saying that. It's only the beginning. Well, we look forward to having you back on to talk about the next big thing from Galleon because this has been fun. And of course, we could keep continue to talk about Galleon all day, but yeah. we know you have things to do. Um, so any other comments or anything else you'd like to share with viewers? No, uh, just, again, thank you. And we talked a little bit about it uh, earlier on, but it's been exciting to see you know, it's a it's a relationship based business and our company mm -hmm. has grown and, and Lisa and Kelly have done a phenomenal job with with uh, this boating broadcast and getting content out to, to viewers that that are interested in, in what we're offering. And I think it's a wonderful platform. And, you know, you you were there in the beginning when we launched Galleon. You were the face at the front desk, Lisa, and Kelly <laughs> was filming all the content and doing it. In fact, you were doing interviews with customers. Yeah, their first. Uh, impressions and and the one that uh, yes. sticks out is there was a gentleman we we had the 500 fly there and the the wings were open and funny enough that our our marketing campaign was break the mold but we hadn't really had it out there yet and uh, you had asked the guy what he thought and he said wow they broke the mold with that boat so it's uh, it's cool that yes. you were there in the beginning and you and and thank you for all that you've done that's all I'll say. So. I, I couldn't be happier to 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 help uh, bring Galleon to uh, the American market and and get people in the know of this uh, amazing uh, not only not only new product this new model but uh, the brand itself. Yeah. Yeah. Wonderful. Excellent. Thanks again well, for everything. And also, well, if, if anybody wants to find out where that GTO is going to be, I believe MarineMax.com. We have uh, some information on there, uh, and you can certainly find out exactly where that boat's going to be. It's going to be doing some touring. It's going to be going all over the place and, and meeting a lot of people and letting everybody hop aboard. So be sure to check it out uh, on MarineMax.com. Excellent. All right. Well, thank you so much for your time, Bob. I'm sure we'll be catching up with you at a later date. Uh, enjoy your afternoon, and we will hopefully see you out on the water sometime soon. Sounds good. We'll see Thanks, you there. Bob. Yeah. Bye bye. We'll right. see you, Thanks, sir. Bob. Very exciting stuff. Yeah. I mean, it's, uh, you know, being aboard it, uh, you know, as, as it was, uh, you know, kind of a still hidden behind the curtain, if you will, is always a cool thing, especially with the new product like that. But just seeing it in person, and like I said from the beginning, just the amount of space you got on that boat. I mean, 32 foot feels a lot bigger than 32 feet. That's, I mean, that's the goal, right? And he said, you know, they had six people on and tr everybody's trying to social distance. And you, I mean, you can with six people. I mean, there's a place for everybody on that boat to kind of get away and think about yourself. You know, sometimes right? you don't always want to be next to somebody on a boat in a crowded area, but, you know, relaxing at the bow and just kicking it all in. That's what boating's all about. It is what boating's all about. So let's bring Landon in to get his thoughts on the Galleon, a GTO line. <laughs> oh, my thoughts? <clears throat> my gosh. I mean, I, I think this new model is so exciting, especially for the Galleon brand. Maybe to peel back the curtain a little bit, I do have a heavy hand on the social media side of things for Galleon. So we have the Galleon Yachts US Instagram page. It's it's grown tremendously. And I know that all the folks there that follow us, that that follow the brand are so excited about this model. I mean, it's really cool. Yeah, it's cool to see what people are saying and and also, you know, just hearing how many people are like, I want to learn more. You know, what's tell me about this. Yeah. Tell me about that. And mm -hmm. uh, stay tuned. Also, we're going to have a full walkthrough video with Bob that kind of walks through everything. Like you want to know why they did this type of feature, why this design is exactly like that. He walks through the entire boat in depth. Uh, that's something that a lot of people have been asking for. So stay tuned for that, too. I can't wait to see that on Landon's social media update. Oh, you know it. I'll 100% <laughs> do that. Yeah, and, and I've even got questions, you know, is sea keeper capabilities, do we have that, you know, bow thrusters, anything else like that? Like, what? you know, I want to know some of the more specifics about some of the decisions on it, but just a gorgeous boat. I mean, so cool. Very cool indeed. All right, Landon, 
We're going to switch gears and get into some more social social news. What's going on in the social media world? Okay, so in this episode, we took a look at a new model, and it's super exciting. So I wanted to keep up with that trend and show you okay. another new model. And this is just going to blow your minds, guys. So, Kelly, if you can <laughs> bring this on screen. All right. I can't wait. <laughs> wow. All right. So everybody loves boating. <laughs> Everybody hot loves tubbing? hot tubs, so why not mix the two together and and not have to be on a super super yacht? You know, you can have a hot <laughs> tub not? that's literally a boat. What do you think the thing is in the back? Do you think that is their cooler? Yes, it's gotta it's be probably right. Probably cooler. It's yep. doubtful that this is actually a running boat. It's more of a <laughs> platform that has been shaped into a boat. But when I came across this on Facebook, I thought it was too too good to pass up. Yeah, I think it actually was probably at, at a certain point of boat and they just converted it. And uh, hey, if you got some cash to throw around and, and want to hang out and make something cool, why not? Yeah, I'm, I would assume you just kind of anchor this down outside your dock out, out of your house or wherever you are. And you just you got the hot tub right there. I mean, you're one with the water at that point. Oh my gosh, that's hilarious. I, I feel like that's a great alt, uh, option for people who have, or like maybe their house is on an inlet, you don't necessarily have a huge backyard mm -hmm. to install a hot tub. You know, hey, have a floating hot tub out in the water. Yeah, I can't even imagine the logistics behind how this thing would even work because I've seen hot tub installments just in a backyard. I don't even know how they would do this, but if it's possible and it's it's an opportunity to, to create that, like you said, Lisa, if you don't have a backyard, Boom, just throw it in the pond, you know, hot tub. I think whoever built that too is uh, maybe they have a, a, a future career in yacht, yacht pool and hot tub, you know, implementation too. Because you always see those big yachts with the hot tubs in the pools. Maybe they, maybe they know what they're doing. Right, right, exactly. So I just wanted to show that to you. I, I thought it was fantastic. So I actually don't have any more social updates. That was kind of the main thing. I just thought it went perfectly in line with showing some new models that were out there. So uh, that's great. And, and we're keeping all things Galleon today for sure, because it is a pretty big week here uh, with Galleon Yachts and the all new uh, GTO collection. So uh, thanks, Landon. That was awesome. You got that it. That is awesome. Always finding the great things on social media. Uh, there is a lot of fun to, uh, to be seen out there. Um, Kelly, any other final thoughts from you today? Uh, you know, Bob is just, a, a, again, you know, we've, we've known him for, I don't know, I'm thinking about five, I think mm. I was, I saw him last week and I'm like five, six years now at this point. Yeah. And, uh, just the amount of knowledge I've gained from Bob, uh, who's been in the business for a long time and just his knowledge, uh, has certainly, uh, rubbed off on me in a lot of good ways of, of just learning the ins and outs of, of the industry of yachts, of, of boats in general. So a uh, shout out to Bob Burke and of course the entire galleon crew. Hopefully one day we'll be able to swing on over to, to Gdansk, Poland and check out the factory where some of these things are built because uh, I've seen some videos and some pictures and man, not only is it a perfect place to build a big yacht, but the the fit and finish and the, you know, the mm -hmm. attention to detail that these people have over there is just incredible. So maybe one day I feel like that's becoming like a running thing with us, uh, boating broadcasters here. We yeah, add it to so the many list. places that we need to check out. <laughs> the Bahamas, we're going to go uh, travel the locks, uh, and now we're going to Poland. For sure. <laughs> Around the world. Uh, boating broadcast. Around the world. There you go. Uh, Landon, anything else to add today? No, I mean, I think Kelly nailed it. I think just the vertical integration, the vertical innovation that Galleon offers mm -hmm. to its customers is so neat. And, you know, hopefully we do get to make that trip to Poland someday because what they do there. And, and we have seen... Uh, you know, photos and videos behind the scenes on location at that, uh, you know, in Poland and people eat it up. It's so interesting to, mm -hmm. to see that quality come out. So one day, one day, one day, one day. One awesome. Day. <laughs> well, thanks guys. And again, thanks to Bob Burke for joining us. Uh, tune in next week. Boating broadcast comes to you every Thursday at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, if you need to catch up on some previous episodes, marinemax.com underneath the Lifestyles blog or through the Marine Max app, you can see or hear more episodes of this show and our sister podcast, Boating Tips Live. Uh, you can find us on Facebook, YouTube, uh, and then any of your favorite uh, podcast platforms, uh, Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio, Spotify, Google, the list goes on. We hope you enjoyed today's boating broadcast. And as always, stay healthy and boat happy. We'll see you next time. We hope you enjoyed this episode of From the Helm Boating Broadcast. 
to keep up with the latest news and notes in the world of boats, be sure to follow us on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and wherever podcasts can be heard. Until next time, we'll see you out on the water. Thank you.